my message today is called, Don't You Buy No Ugly Truck. Now, when is the last time you asked yourself, Am I buying an ugly truck? Probably never, right? Well, this is a question that you and I should be asking ourselves on a regular basis. I will tell you why in my message this morning. I'm going to be talking about trucks and troubles. And just so you will keep this in mind, here's my definition of a truck. A truck is something which can move us from where we are to somewhere else. Hopefully, where we want to be and someplace better. <clears throat> the title, Don't You Buy No Ugly Truck, comes from an old-time TV commercial uh, from the 80s. Yes, I know, I'm dating myself. But you all know that I love commercials and comics and things like that, cartoons. Okay. Well, this one is from the 80s, and it was a favorite of mine, and always has been. Uh, the commercial became quite popular, and it helped rack up car and truck sales at many dealerships which were using this commercial at the time. In this commercial, a heavy-set, grandmotherly woman in farm clothes, complete with an apron and a funny-looking hair bonnet, comes on the screen with a sour look in her face as she stares out at us. The viewers and warns, don't you buy no ugly truck. <laughs> and then, right behind her, the shot features some car or truck dealership where the salesman tells us something like, that's right, folks. Don't you buy no ugly truck. Y'all, come on down to Andy's truck store. We don't have no ugly trucks here. Our lot is filled with bright and beautiful trucks. We do financing. So, come on down and get you one of these pretty trucks to take home. <laughs> this commercial on ugly trucks made ugly trucks very popular. And after this ugly truck campaign came out on the air, there were shows and even parades featuring ugly trucks. There were even songs written about ugly trucks. And I'd like to share a, uh, one of these songs with you. It's called Pretty Girls Don't Ride in No Ugly Truck. It's by Johnny Calton, and the talented singer is Michaela Medici. Oh, 
I am using the ugly truck as a metaphor for negative thinking. Okay. <clears throat> when I uh, when I decided to do this message here, uh, I decided to look up ugly trucks. Uh, the phrase itself, ugly truck, and the whole thing about don't you buy no ugly truck, became as popular as RV's Where's the Beef? Remember that commercial? And uh, I found several videos of ugly trucks, and I was amazed to see the wide variety in which these trucks were ugly. Ugly trucks were unique specimens. No two of them ugly in quite the same way. What seemed odd was how proud folks of, were of their ugly trucks. Guess it's true that beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Most of the ugliest trucks I saw online were uh, Dr. Frankenstein kind of trucks, all patched up with different parts from taken from many other vehicles. And they had peeling paint and half-painted bodies, rusted underbellies, and all kinds of dents and missing parts. But they were still running and still able to transport people and things somewhere else. But there's another way to think of trucks and a powerful spiritual message to be found in the warning by Granny, don't you buy no ugly truck, which we're going to explore. Let's examine the slogan and see the light that it has for us. From my definition of a truck, presented earlier, a truck is something which can move us from where we are to where, to somewhere else. A truck can be a metaphor for our state of consciousness, and our state of consciousness is the driving force, get that? The driving force in how we live our lives. Consciousness is defined as essentially what we think, what we feel, what we believe, what we remember uh, about ourselves, about others, and about our world. This awareness is subjective and unique to each of us. Our thoughts, feelings, belief, and memories, like trucks, can transport us from where we are to somewhere else from one type of experience to a different one. Often when we refer to something as ugly, we mean that we find it distasteful, difficult to accept, painful, troubling, discouraging, and maybe disturbing. Acts of nature, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, drought, tornadoes, politics, wars, can all be called ugly experiences. When the day is rainy, cold, and cloudy, looked out at the patio right then, and we have been looking forward to blue skies and temperate weather, we can say it's an ugly day. Someone can be said to be in an ugly state of mind or an ugly mood, which we mean to understand that they are troubled, difficult to deal with, disagreeable, unhappy, mean-spirited, discouraged, discouraged, or disappointed in some way. So, when we have a state of mind which causes us problems, brings about situations or experiences that we find difficult to accept or to deal with, they are hurtful or painful or troubling us, we can say we're having an ugly truck experience. Follow me here? Now, let's reflect on the idea of buying something, because the warning is don't buy no ugly truck. Besides making a material or physical purchase of something, we often use the expression buy as in to, uh, uh, to get someone to buy in to something, to indicate that others are in agreement with us or open to the ideas that we want to express or share. And this can be a positive or a negative expression. For example, 
a negative buy-in, we could say, would be people who get caught up in the hysteria or the fears of others. They are buying into those fears. They are accepting whatever the sense of lack or limitation that someone else has as their own reality. And they are reacting as if it was their own reality. Using my definition, a truck is a state of mind. An ugly truck is a negative state of mind. A consciousness filled with negative, life-denying thoughts, attitudes, beliefs. An ugly truck causes us to have, guess what? Ugly experiences. To buy something or to buy into something means that we claim it. We accept it as our own. We make it part of the way we think and, and respond to life. It becomes the colored glasses that we look through in order to interpret our world. Our life may be filled with blessings that we can't see or won't accept. And therefore we can't experience because our mental, spiritual car lot, our consciousness, is filled with ugly trucks that we've purchased from the dealership called the world. When we check out the metaphysics of Granny's truck warning, the message becomes something else, positive, constructive. Do not buy into the ugly trucks of the world. That is, stop accepting, claiming, and making a part of your belief. The ugly, negative, life-denying, and life-belittling messages that the world wants you to believe about yourself, about your life, about your world. Do not truck this stuff home in your consciousness. Now, many of you may recall that the Apostle Paul said this same thing about not buying ugly trucks. Only, he phrased it a little bit differently in Romans 12, 2, when he said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove that the will of God, what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Paul was saying, don't buy those ugly trucks that the world wants to sell you. Do not be conformed. That is, do not shape and form who you are into the limited negative image that the world may have of you or sends to you. Don't buy into those trucks of thought, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, if we find that we have made a mess of our lives by buying too many ugly trucks from the world's car lot, and if we are in the habit of negatively judging ourselves, criticizing or belittling ourselves based on the disparaging messages the world sends us, we need not beat ourselves up about this. We can change our life. We truly believe that here in Unity. And we can release the old mental and emotional tapes and memories by taking those ugly truck th thoughts to the dump and replace them with the kind of thoughts, words, attitudes, and beliefs that lift us up by reminding us who we are spiritually. We can accept brand new trucks which we are proud to have in our spiritual car lot. It can be your heart or your mind, otherwise known as our consciousness. This life is a school for soul, and we are learning every day through our experiences what it means for us to be spiritual beings made in the image and likeness of God, and learning how to live more fully from this essential divinity which indwells us, which here in unity we call the Christ within. Yes, the Christ within each of us. This is the same divine aspect of God which indwelled and expressed more fully through Jesus, our elder brother, and way short. Jesus worked in his ministry of words and works to help the people who came to him to clear out their spiritual, mental car lots, to release and let go of the ugly trucks, the negative falsehoods about themselves which they had collected and accepted as their truth, just like us in today's world, accepting so much negativity from our social media. 
Jesus was a powerful user of affirmative statements. He spoke positively about himself and encouraged us to think good, uplifting thoughts about ourselves. And he pointed out not only his own divine spiritual nature, but also our own as well. For example, in John 8, 12, Jesus declares this about himself. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. But yet, in another message about the light of the world, found in Matthew 5, verse 14 through 16, Jesus tells us, his listeners, you and me, that we are the light of the world, too. And Jesus even bumps up this a bit more in other affirmative true statements when he speaks about our connections with him and each other and our oneness with God, which we may all one day realize. In John 14, 20, Jesus says, On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father. Father was Jesus' name for God. And you are in me, and I am in you. What a great picker-upper these affirmative thoughts are for us, especially when we're feeling alone, or feeling like we are not enough. A bit like the worms of the dust that uh, old traditional ministers used to say. Due to errors or mistakes that we've made. Here then is the key to stop buying ugly trucks from the world. To learn to think of ourselves as the spiritual beings that Jesus claimed we are. The more we connect consciously with divine love and wisdom. As we do in prayer, meditation, reflection, mindfulness the more we begin to think of ourselves and others in ways which harmonize with God's will of good for us. The ways of the Holy Spirit, called the working inner aspect of God, will become our ways. We become, through this inner guidance, power and wisdom, a master of our life circumstances. Then, when difficulties arise, we learn to view ourselves and others spiritually through the eyes of God helping us overcome many obstacles and difficulties. This perspective changes everything, just like my song said. Changes everything when we remember that we are loved. In terms of our ability to rise up whenever we seem to have fallen as human beings, this perspective lifts us up. So the formula for getting rid of the ugly trucks that we have bought into is given by Jesus in John 15, 7, when he says, If you will hang with me and let my words, not the words of the disparaging, excuse me, of the disparaging world around you, fill your consciousness, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. As we fill our inner car lot, our mind, our consciousness, our heart, with the kinds of affirmative thoughts and words that Jesus spoke about, we are, as the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2.5, letting be in us the same mind that was in Jesus, who recognized his indwelling Christ nature and the divinity in us all. Now, I'd like to share a story in closing of what happened to a woman who was able to release the ugly trucks that she had bought and held on to for three years. A man came across a folded piece of paper while he was at the San Francisco airport that said, read me, on the front. Well, how could anybody possibly resist that invitation? He knew he just had to look, so he did. And what he discovered inside was something surprising and wonderful. She shared, I recently left an emotionally abusive relationship after months of insults that I won't repeat, false accusations, lies, delusions, broken mirrors, nightly battles. I finally left. I know that I was being poisoned each day that I stayed. So, with a heavy heart, I left my lover of three years, knowing that I had already put it off too long. At first he begged, then he cursed, but eventually 
he packed his bags and faded out of my life like a bad dream. For the first few weeks, my body seemed to reject this. For three years, I had seen the world through his colored glasses. I didn't know who I was without him. Despite the kindness of friends and even strangers, I could not help feeling utterly alone. But it was this sense of lonesomeness that set me free. Somewhere along the way, I let go. I released all the painful memories. The names that he called me, the shards of him buried deep in my brain. I stopped believing the things that he made me think about myself. And I began to see how extraordinary, how breathtakingly beautiful life is. I meditated. I drank too much coffee. I talked to strangers. I laughed at nothing. I wrote poetry. And I stopped to smell and photograph every flower. Once I discovered that my happiness depends only on myself, nothing could hurt me anymore. I have found and continue to find peace. Each day, I'm closer to it than I was yesterday. I am a work in progress, but I am full to the brim with gratitude and joy. And so, since I have opened a new chapter in my life, I want to peacefully part with the contents of the last chapter. The end of my relationship was the catalyst for a wealth of positive changes in my life. It was a symbol more, more importantly, it was an act of self-love. It was a realization that I deserved to be happy and that I could choose to be. And so, in an effort to leave behind the things that do not help me grow, I'm letting go of a relic from the painful past. I wore this necklace, which was a gift from him, for over two years. To me, Letting it go is a joyous declaration that I am moving forward with strength, with grace, and with deep and lasting peace. Please accept this gift as a reminder that we all deserve happiness. Whoever you are and whatever pain you have faced, I hope you find peace. Namaste, Jamie. Jamie's letter shows that with courage and with tapping into the love that God is in us, a measure of self-love. We can change our life for the better and find happiness in a way that we might not even thought possible. And all this if we stop buying ugly trucks from the world. God bless you. And now I invite you to join with me in our meditation. You might sit back where you're seated or if you're lying down, just relax, let the cheer the couch or the bed hold you up. Quiet your mind by focusing on your breath, your inhalation and exhalation. And as you do this, bring to mind some of the things that Jamie focused on in order to free herself of the ugly trucks that she had bought and held as true for her for three years. She had become so attached to her lover that she had lost her sense of who she was because she was seeing life through his colored glasses. Finally, one day she came to herself. Jamie said, somewhere along the way, I just let go. She began to heal when she released the painful memories. Releasing these ugly trucks of thought, she began to see how beautiful life is, how beautiful her own life could be. She meditated got in touch with that deeper presence within. She wrote poetry, talked to strangers, laughed at nothing, stopped to smell and photograph every flower. She was getting in touch with her true self, that spiritual being, that Christ within. And Jamie said that once she discovered that her happiness depended on herself, nothing could hurt her. And she found and continues to find greater and greater peace. This is where we want to be. We too are works in progress. We too can be full of gratitude and joy at opening new chapters in our life. 
if we will choose to release and let go of the ugly truck thoughts that we have bought into, that we have claimed as true of us. And although your experiences may not be anything like Jamie's, take a moment to reflect now and see if there's anything that you have been holding in your mind or in your heart against yourself or another. If there is any criticism, harsh or negative judgment in your mind or heart being held toward yourself or another, which keeps you from feeling free to be who you spiritually are, decide that you can let this go. Can you recall times when you may have betrayed yourself by belittling yourself or your dreams, trying to make yourself smaller so that someone else could feel taller? Or maybe you allowed someone else to treat you in a small way. As you breathe deeply and become aware of your inhalation and exhalation now, forgive yourself. Forgive others. Let the energy of those ugly trucks dissipate into nothingness and replace them in your mental, emotional car lot with new, improved models. Determine that you will claim for yourself the spiritual identity that Jesus and other spiritual masters have claimed for you in their words, their teachings, and the example they have set for you. Realize that what others have done, you can do too. And Jesus said this in John 14, 12, Verily I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I am doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And what this means, metaphys excuse, metaphysically, is Jesus saying, what I do is made possible because I remember my connection with God. I go to the Father. I go to that inner connection and become centered in the presence of God indwelling me. And now, friend, I invite you to go now to this inner connection that you have with God, the only presence and power in your life, in this universe. And realize the truth of who you are as you affirm the following statements in the silence. I move now to the center of my being, where my Christ self is forever one with the divine spirit of God in which I live, move, and have my being. I am that. I am that. Affirm to yourself, if these words are comfortable for you, I let go and I replace all the ugly truck thoughts that I've been holding in my mind, in my heart, with the truth that Jesus spoke about me. I am the light of the world. I choose now to let this light in me shine through me from this center of my being. I am guided. I am inspired. I am encouraged. I am strengthened. I am empowered to be all that I choose to be, to live the life that I choose to live, to share my world, share with my world my true radiant self. I am gifted. I am blessed. And I am a blessing to my world. I send out to my world truckloads of love energy, truckloads of peace energy, truckloads of goodwill. And now, I invite you to become aware of your breath 
your inhalation and exhalation and begin to move your body as we come out of this time of reflection. <laughs> 